Hey, this is Mr. and this is the last section in Chapter 4. This is Section 4.7, Inverse Trigonometric Functions. And so let's take a look. Um, let's take a look at inverse functions. Uh, we, we, we talked about inverse functions uh, last unit, the unit before. Uh, if we have a function like this, uh, f of x equals 2x, and so if I want to know what the inverse of that is, remember that's that 2 in front of that x is really 2 to the first power. So to move it to the other side, we really need to do 2 to the negative 1. Or you're dividing by 2, right? When you're multiplying by 2, what's the inverse of that is dividing by 2. You can see in this green graph right here, here's the function y equals 2x. You can see I know y equals 2 to the negative 1 of x is the inverse because it is the mirrored image to y equals x. And not only do regular functions have inverses, but also trigonometric functions have inverses as well. So what's the algebra or the inverse of sine of x? It is equal to sine to the negative 1. Okay, so x is equal to sine to the negative 1 of y. Okay, so how do you move sine over to the other side? You do sine to the negative 1. Where is that on your calculator? Your calculator is right here, our sine button, our sine to the negative 1, the algebra of that, the sine to the negative 1 button, the cosine to the negative 1 button, the tangent to the negative 1 button, is right as we do second or shift of that function in order to solve for it. So we're doing algebra or solving here using our inverse functions. We also have another name for this sine to the negative 1. It is arc sine. Arc sine of y is equal to x. So sine to the negative 1 is also called arc sine. What's the, what's the inverse of cosine is arc cosine and or arc cos. And what's the inverse of tangent would be arc tan, okay, or arc tangent of my function. Okay, and that's why I've been so particular about saying something like cosecant is the reciprocal or one over the sine. It's not the inverse. The inverse of sine would be sine to the negative one. A lot of math teachers have a tough time with this. Uh, even in the terminology, you have to be very particular in your terminology. So you can see how here it says we're finding the the exact values of arc sine of negative. 1 over 2, okay, arc sine of negative 1 over 2. So if you did that on your calculator and did arc sine of negative 0.5, you would get negative 30, okay, in your calculator. Your calculator can't really distinguish much past this first quadrant, okay. Now if we look on our unit circle for arc sine of negative, uh, and, and think about what this means. It says arc sine of negative 1 over 2 equals some angle. If I flip this on the other side, it says negative 1 half equals sine of what angle? So sine of what angle equals negative 1 over 2? If we take a look, that's equal to negative 1 over 2. That's at 330 degrees, or 11 pi over 6 radians, isn't it? Okay, Which would be the same as doing negative 30 degrees, like my calculator told me. Okay, now that is what arc sine would be. Now you might say, Mr. Aiden, there's another value that also gives me negative one over two, and that's seven pi over six. Which one is right? Is 11 pi over six or seven pi over six right? Yes, they're both right, aren't they? They're both right. There's, and, and if you put in your calculator, if you were in, you might call this 330 degrees and also 210 degrees. They are both correct. Okay, 330 degrees and 210 degrees are both correct. If you put in your calculator um, sine of 210 degrees, you're going to get negative one half. If you get sine of 330 degrees, you get negative one half. Your calculator cannot distinguish the difference between these two. And so you, it can either be 11 pi over 6 or 7 pi over 6. Okay? And so you can see it would be either that point or that point would give you that value. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Sine to the negative 1, which is the same as arc sine, equals positive root 3 over 2. So take a look. Where is sine equal to root 3 over 2? Right there at pi over 3. And also right here at 2 pi over 3. So those are my two answers for that. Is It could be either at pi over 3 or 2 pi over 3. I hope you can see is... Sine values correspond 
uh, kind of in this first and second quadrant or third and fourth quadrant, okay? Because that's, remember, sine, we're dealing with the vertical here. Uh, let's take a look at this last one. Uh, arc sine, or sine to negative 1, equals negative 1. Okay, where does it equal negative 1? Only one angle, and that is 3 pi over 2. Okay, now just keep in mind, if you had something like this, arc sine of, of 2, guess what? That's outside the domain. You can't do that. If you did it in your calculator, you would get an undefined value. So this does not, this does not exist. It's, it's undefined, okay? It's undefined. You can't have this value outside of your domain that you see. And so we can also find uh, the inverse trigonomic functions of other values, uh, values like uh, arc cosine. So our cosine of root 2 over 2. So we're going to look for where does cosine equal root 2 over 2. So we have one value right here at pi over 4. So I know I have pi over 4. And one value right here at 7 pi over 4. Okay, so you can see how, make sure for sine values, you can see the sine values kind of correspond left and right to each other. And so if you find a sine value, look to the left, look to the right. And there's probably going to be the same value. For cosine, it's going to be up and down because that's going to give us positive values for your cosine. Okay, Let's take a look at the next one. Cosine to negative 1, or arc cosine equals negative 1. There's only one place where arc cosine equals negative 1, and that's at pi radians or 180 degrees. Okay. Uh, then we go to arc tangent of 0. When does tangent equal 0? Well, remember, tangent is going to be y over x. So we have this value right here at 0 radians. But remember, we could go all the way around to 2 pi radians. And theoretically, we could be 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi. We could go on forever because, remember, it's an oscillating function. But I'm really only going to ask you from between 0 and 2 pi, in one full circle, what are the total possible values you could have? Okay. One last problem, what about arctangent of negative root 3? Remember, tangent is going to be positive in the first and the uh, third quadrants, which means if I want to know for my tangent, or my arctangent, where does tangent equal negative root 3? Well, the sign's got to be on the top. That's going to be right here at 2 pi over 3. That's where it equals negative root 3. And your corresponding angles for your tangents are going to be right over here as well. Okay, so 5 pi over 3. So if once you find one angle for sine, you're kind of going to look across from each other. If you find one angle for cosine, you kind of look on top and bottom. If for your tangents, you're going to be looking... Uh, kind of across from each other to find that corresponding angle, that second angle that might work for the arc tangents for evaluating those inverse functions. Now we also have a thing called composite functions. Composite functions, if you remember, is taking one function and shoving it in the other function. So here I have g of x right here. I have f, the function of x equals x plus 6, g of x equals x minus 6, and I'm looking for f of g of x. So what am I doing with my g of x? I'm shoving this right in my x right here. So I'm taking this x minus 6, I put him right in for this x, and I continue the same function. That's your composite function, and what are you left with is x, which means this is what we call an inverse function. Okay? If you take f of x, and you take g of x, and you put f of g of x in, and you get x, we know we have what's called an inverse function. We have an inverse function. So here, if your f of x is sine of x and your uh, g of x is arc sine of x, and we take this and we shove this guy in for the x to find f of g of x sine of arc sine of x, the sine and arc side cancel out. We're left with x, which means these are inverse functions of each other. Okay. So let's use these inverse properties to, to solve these. Okay. So we have tan times arc tan of negative 5 gives me negative 5. It cancels each other out. Arc sine of sine of 5, 5 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. Okay. Cosine of arc cosine of 2, remember you can't have arc cosine of 2. So it, 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 there's no answer to this because this is outside of 
the domain. So it still has to be inside the domain, but uh, remember you can't have you can't have co <laughs> there's no angle where cosine is equal to. Two, okay? And then what's the sine of arc sine of neg uh, to, uh, sine of arc sine of one half? That's one half. <laughs> These are easy peasy lemon something. Uh, so what? Squeezy, squeezy, that's it, squeezy. Okay, so let's take a look at how to do uh, when it's not as easy, when it's not sine of arc sine, cosine of arc cosine, tan of arc tan, or something like that. What happens if we have tan of arc cosine? A little bit harder, okay? But if you follow my method to do this, it ends up being really easy. First, let's forget about the tangent. Let's just start with the arc cosine of two-thirds. Remember, arc cosine two-thirds equals some angle, which means if I do some algebra, what this really says is cosine of the angle equals two-thirds. See how I kind of move the cosine over the other side. What do I know about cosine? Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I like to draw a little triangle. So here's two is my x, my cosine, my adjacent, and my hypotenuse is three. Guys, I don't care if this is uh, if if this is drawn the scale or anything. I'm just sketching a quick triangle. I know the x side is two, the hypotenuse is three, which means I can do the the Pythagorean theorem: three squared equals two squared plus your y squared. Okay, we have nine equals four plus y squared, which means y is it going to be equal to root five, isn't it? Nine minus four is five. Square root it, so I have root five. So I use this value to get my triangle. Okay, I knew because r cosine of two over three equals uh, your angle, I can know what all my sides are. Now what it's saying is, what's my tangent of this angle? Because remember, r cosine, I made this equal to angle, didn't I? So what is the tangent of the angle equal to? Well, what is tangent is the y over the x. The y over the x. What's my y value? Is root five. What's my x value? Is two. And so the answer is root five over two. Okay, so use, when you have a composite function, use the first one to draw your triangle, then evaluate your second one, okay? And so let me, let me do another example for you. Here, I'm going to forget about the cosine. I'm only going to focus on this right here. We have arc sine of negative 3 over 5 equals some angle. I do my algebra. Negative 3 over 5 equals sine of my angle. What do I know sine is equal to? It's equal to my y over my hypotenuse. Okay. So my y value is negative 3, isn't it? My y value is negative 3. So negative 3 in my y value okay and uh, or actually let me do a better triangle than this okay so my hypotenuse is 5 okay 5 I have negative 3 in my y value which means my x value is right here isn't it okay my x value is going to be 4 why because it's a 3 4 5 triangle I do my Pythagorean theorem now I know my whole triangle don't I so I have negative 3, well, I have 5 for my hypotenuse, my 4 is my x value. Now what is this saying? This says cosine of that angle. Remember I made arc sine of negative 3 over 5, my angle. So it's saying cosine of my angle. What is cosine is x over hypotenuse. What is my x value is 4, my hypotenuse is 5. And so my answer is 4 fifths. So evaluating compositions of functions, kind of difficult, but if you logically step through it, draw out a triangle, it will make plenty of sense in the end. That's our chapter, guys. Chapter four, we got our trigonomic functions, inverse trig functions. Yeah, boy, we done chapter four. Have a good day.